Good morning, Church of Our Savior family and friends or whoever might be accessing this video. Uh, so glad that you have tuned in and are able to uh, take part in this morning uh, word from the Lord together with us. Uh, we have certainly missed being together over the past uh, week and now two Sundays that we have not been worshiping together. It has been sad around here uh, at the church. Uh, we miss being able to greet one another and to, uh, to hug one another and to welcome one another warmly in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but at the same time, we know that right now we're doing the right thing. Uh, we're loving one another fulfilling the commandment of Christ, uh, and protecting one another, uh, doing our part to, uh, to, to lower or flatten the curve uh, in order to support all of our medical uh, people and emergency responders uh, to make their life a little bit better and easier to manage right now. We continue to pray for all of you for protection, for healing. Uh, we pray for our world. We pray against this, uh, this virus that it would have uh, any more uh, destruction in, in its wake. And I encourage you to continue in prayer. Well, what we are going to do uh, on Sundays until we're able to meet together is what we are, are affectionately referring to as our fireside chats. Uh, we don't have a fireplace here with us, as you will see. Uh, but the, the spirit of what we're doing is taken from uh, World War II during wartime uh, and the bombings of London. Uh, Sir Winston Churchill asked C.S. Lewis to conduct some lectures over the radio in order to, to calm the fears and anxieties of the people in London. Uh, they were in great fear for their lives with bombs bursting above them all night long. And C.S. Lewis would come on and speak of the hope that we have in Jesus Christ, uh, that in him our lives are not in mortal danger, uh, that in him our lives have been bought and paid for, that we are secure in every way. And so he shared the hope of the gospel message itself. And so that's what we're going to continue to do on Sundays, no matter how we can do it, whether it's on video or in person, we're going to continue to proclaim uh, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so I'm so grateful that you are able to, that we're able to be together uh, in this time and share the word together. To begin our time, I offer up a prayer for the fourth Sunday of Lent uh, from our uh, collect for the fourth Sunday of Lent. Uh, for those who are maybe new to the Anglican faith uh, or are you know, maybe you uh, never have, don't know anything about Anglicanism. Uh, we have a, a collection of prayers. That's why it's called the Collect, because it's from the collection of prayers that the Archbishop of Canterbury, uh, the first Reformed uh, Archbishop in, uh, in England, uh, that he put together based on uh, old uh, early church prayers that, that he had found as well as some that he had written himself. And so these prayers are tried and true and they direct our hearts and minds uh, to the truth of God's word. And so I invite you to pray with me uh, as we pray this first prayer, this collect for the fourth Sunday in Lent. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world. Evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Jesus is the bread of life. That's what he proclaimed. Which means that when we feast on him, putting our faith and trust in him, that we will hunger no more, that our lives will be completely satisfied in him. And so we come to feast on our Savior all the more this morning as we turn our attention to uh, his temptation in the wilderness at the hands of Satan through Matthew chapter 4. Uh, we're continuing a series that, that we've been looking at through this season of Lent, 
uh, the first two Sundays from the pulpit while we were met together. Last Sunday uh, in a devotional I sent out for our congregation. Uh, today we find ourselves uh, in the third temptation that Jesus faced. And so I want to read that third temptation uh, for us all before saying a few words about it. In chapter 4 of Matthew's Gospel, uh, beginning with the 8th verse, Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. You know, as we've looked at these temptations of Jesus, uh, we've been guided in a large part from uh, the book of Hebrews, which tells us that Jesus was tempted in every way that we are, yet he was without sin. Which tells us that in these temptations that Jesus faces from Satan, uh, is the same kind of temptation that we face every day in our own lives. Uh, and this temptation today was a temptation to embrace his own glory, or to find his own glory. Satan took him to a high place, we're told. Uh, a high place, it's reminiscent of the high places uh, in ancient Israel, the places where uh, pagan uh, churches would put their temples uh, for their worship because they believed it was the closest place between them and the gods and the heavens. Uh, they believed that those were special sacred places. Well, Satan took him to one of those type places uh, and had him look down at all the kingdoms of the earth. And he said, if you will bow down and worship me, I will give you all these kingdoms in all of their glory. Now, what does he mean by glory? Well, uh, the word glory here means something that is of infinite value. It has a heavy weight. That's at the core of the meaning of this word glory. C.S. Lewis uh, published, or they published a book based on C.S. Lewis's, some of his lectures and teachings called The Weight of Glory. And so imagine it as this. If you go to the, the grocery store, uh, don't go now. Uh, and certainly don't try to go buy toilet paper or any kind of hand sanitizers or anything of that nature. Um, but if you go to the produce aisle on a normal day, uh, and you go and you pick up uh, a bundle of apples, and they say that those apples are a uh, $1.99 a pound, say, and you then take those apples and you go and you put them in the, you get your bag, you load it up, you put it into the scale, and it tells you how heavy they are. Well, the heavier they are, the more weight they have, therefore the more valuable they are. Well, that's what the word glory means, that which has weightiness to it, that which uh, is of, of great value because of how heavy it is. And so what Satan is tempting Jesus with is uh, that he, this amazing, glorious, important thing that he's seeing, and that is all the kingdoms of the earth. And Satan says, all of it can be yours. The glory can be yours. The affections and the adoration of all these kingdoms, all these people, will all be for you. There's just one trick. There's one thing you have to do. I'll give it all to you if you will bow down and worship me. If you will bow down and worship me. Now, to worship means to ascribe all worth to someone or to something. To say that that person or that thing is of the greatest value in your life above all others. And what Satan wanted Jesus to do was to say that he was the most valuable, the most important person in Jesus' life. And if he did that, he would give them all the glory of the world and of the kingdoms around him. That was Jesus' temptation. You know, and that's the... the the first principle, really, uh, of glory-seeking and of the temptation to find glory in ourselves or in other things that we need to understand. What you find most glorious in life is that which you will find yourself worshiping. It's just the truth. If you, uh, let's say, if money is the thing that you value most, what you will find is that your whole world begins to revolve around money. Every decision you make will be based on how much money you can make. Every fear, every anxiety that you have will be because of the threat against your wealth. 
Therefore, what you think is your well-being in life, what's best for your family, what's best in the eyes of God will not be what matters most to you because what you're valuing, what you find glory in is in the creation, not in the creator himself. What if it's, uh, what if your own health is what you take glory in? What if that's the thing that is of the most value in your life? Well, then every decision you make will be based on your health. It'll be the most important. You will bow down to it at all costs. You will give up anything to make sure that you are always healthy and safe and sound. And the fruit of that will be fear. Because that worship will end up controlling you. That which you glory in will control your life. You'll live in fear for going out in a virus or helping someone who's in need because of what it might do to your own health. You see, that which we put our glory in and therefore worship ends up controlling our lives. That's the the message that we're being told here uh, in Jesus' temptation. And yet Jesus, when he faced this temptation, he didn't give in. Satan wanted him to bow down to him, to seek his own glory, to put glory in in the creation, not in the creator himself. But Jesus stayed faithful and obedient to his heavenly father. He gave God the glory and recognized from the word of God itself that we are to worship no one else but God because he's the only one who's worthy of our glory in the first place. And you see, when we worship God alone and recognize that he is the only one worthy of our, of glory in this world, what happens is then he becomes the one who controls our lives. And when he controls our lives and his son, Jesus Christ, who was faithful in the face of temptation, who didn't give in, was obedient all the way to his own death on the cross, when we, are, when we put glory in God and worship him alone, our lives are covered in Jesus. For he is our Savior who is faithful in every way. He was the perfect sacrifice for us, for us unfaithful people, those of us who put our, our glory in people and things and fall short of the glory of God. Thanks be to God that Jesus came that he was faithful, and that he has saved us from our sins. Let us pray. Jesus, thank you that you are our Savior, that you love us so much, that you gave your life for us. Thank you that you faced every temptation that we do, and yet you were without sin. We ask you to come now by the power of your Holy Spirit. Convict us of the things that we're looking to for glory other than you, those things that are betraying our lives, that are filling us with fear, we ask you to rescue us from those things, that we might worship you alone, trust you with our lives, and find that our lives are safe and secure because we have a faithful Savior. And Jesus, we pray this in your mighty name. Amen. We miss you all here. We're praying for you. Uh, We love you. Uh, We will continue to communicate with you as best we can through uh, all the outlets that technology will allow us to do, uh, through uh, emails, through the daily devotionals, through just any communication, phone calls. Please let us know if you have any needs. Uh, Call us, send us emails, let us know. Uh, We want to stay connected to one another and continue to lift each other up and to encourage and pray for one another, that we might remain strong in the love of God for us and his son, Jesus Christ. Be encouraged today. We have a faithful Savior who has won for us eternal life that no virus could ever take away. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, may that peace guard your hearts and minds and the knowledge and love of God through his Son, Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all and remain with you always. Amen. Go and
in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.